Well, it's raining. So I'm conserving some calories. Ooh. Yeah, it's gonna be a slow day today if it's gonna be like this. I don't know if we're gonna wanna paddle out the other spot in the raid. Well, we could do some bird hunting here. We gotta get that meat cooking. Just that slow, steady rain. It wasn't supposed to rain today. But that's been steady. I forced myself to fall back and sleep a few times. Not much you can do in this kind of rain. But we got to do it. we got to make sure our meat doesn't spoil. we got a lot of meat to take care of now. I mean, in this kind of weather, it's hard to deal with. So, I haven't heard Zach up yet. And uh, he's probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Just hopefully this rain goes away. we got to get that beaver cooking. I doubt it cooked all the way through last night. Just put it on the fire, left it. Hopefully it would stew. Probably didn't cook all the way. Well, actually it looks like it's mostly cooked, so that's good news. We just gotta heat that up. I'm gonna show you Zach set up here. You're not nude, are you? No, no. <laughs> can barely Sleep in the buff. Can barely see you over there. Yeah. With the camo. Yeah, that war bonnet camo. That stuff's almost invisible. It's like I'm talking to a tarp. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Hey, hello. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Probably a good idea to hang out. I kept sleeping and waking up and sleeping and waking up. I'm not gonna hold out in this rain. It's not good to move in this stuff. Yeah, I figure it's like it's not. Uh, I wanted to get up at first light and chase some grouse down, but. What's the point? You know, mm -hmm. they're not going to be out right now. Not in this rain. So, conserve yeah. some calories. That's the idea. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get that fire going and we're going to get that beaver going. Awesome. All right, I'm going to read for a minute. I'll be out. Cool. Just because everything's got rained on doesn't mean it's all wet. See these last ones here. If a stick snaps like that, there's a pretty good chance it's dry. And if you cut it and you look on the inside, you'll notice it's a light color, not a dark color. That means it's dry. Same with the outside. If it's a lighter color rather than a dark color, it's probably dry. And if it's not heavy, it's probably dry. It's always trickier to start fires after rain and the wet. The hardest conditions are when it's cold and there's ice forming on everything. So as you light your fire, all that moisture melts and gets in your fire. Thankfully, we have lots of birch bark around here and birch bark has oils in it that are very flammable. little spruce grouse from yesterday it's gonna be a little treasure I'm gonna to try to bring it home nice and high now that's what we want big fire let that burn down to coals and we'll throw our beaver meat on here's a look at it I'm gonna cut it up and uh, we'll let that stew nicely so it might look like it's cooked on the outside but on the inside it's still a little bit pink so the best thing to do is to actually pull the whole thing out like that and then we'll uh, break it apart it's actually fairly tender but still chewy on Pull this apart and then we'll make a proper stew with this. Probably add some bear fat because this beaver is actually a little bit leaner than the ones we had last year. So to make it a complete meal, we'll definitely need to add more fat. That's that gross that we had left over. All the bones on the bottom. That's what we want, nice and disintegrated. So 
So that there is just straight up bare fat. We're gonna add, we should be adding probably half fat. I don't think we'll get there, but that's okay. That's just seasoning salt for everybody out there. Part of our cheats we're adding salt because you can't find that in the bush. So I haven't put any limitations on salt, salt, spices, all that stuff. So we have a bag of them, including the wadobo spice. I'm gonna try to do the wadobo on another grouse. So uh, Zach's up on the slingshot, I think now. He'd be upset if I shot another one. I did yesterday. I said I would shoot the first two. And I think in the heat of the moment, I took, well, I, not, I think I did take the other two. So. Yeah, I guess it was in my mind. I just wanted to eat a lot of grouse and I didn't want to uh, chance missing one. So, but yeah, the next ones, they're definitely for uh, for Zach. So yeah, we got salt, we got the wadoba spice, we got some garlic salt spices. Um, these are things that people would have traded for. They wouldn't have been stuff that they could find locally. The local spices around here, anything that's really good is not actually that good. There's a few things you can make teas out of and stuff like that, but it's it's not good on meats and it's not, like you can find mint i don't know do you want to eat mint meat like we're used to eating it as toothpaste um and the natives actually is an interesting story when they came or the europeans came here they had lots of medicinal plants for medicine and those were the flavorings that europeans used to flavor their food so uh the natives thought that the uh, europeans were actually just medicating their food which to them was disgusting but well, the Europeans hated the spices that the natives had and they couldn't stand just eating stuff plain. So they would have just eaten stuff without flavoring and they would have enjoyed, you know, beaver meat, bear meat, deer meat, just plain straight up. So uh, Europeans changed that when, uh, when they came here and started bringing the spices and the spice trade was a huge thing because, you know, if you're eating the same things every day, you want to make it a little bit different if you can. Even though all the, all the good ingredients are there, all the things you need, the fats, the proteins, you know the carbs you can get that if you uh if you don't have the flavorings your life kind of sucks every meal i'm going to try to have apples i picked these in southern ontario before i came up we mostly collected all of our food before we kind of got into the challenge i've noticed in past years that just doing a five day you spend five days collecting your food and then you have a surplus of food at the end you don't actually have time to consume. So I've done things differently this time and pre-collected almost all of our food. Now we're switching gears. It's not like we didn't collect enough and we could have done it starving this time. We just wouldn't have time to consume all the food and actually live off of it to see if we could, you know, keep our weight up. So little differences and little changes every year to make it more like it would have been you know in the past where people dealt through seasonal abundance they would have had a lot of food all at the same time they would have stored and preserved a lot of that food for leaner times and the fall is actually a good time to do it i've wanted to do a wilderness living challenge for a long time in the fall because there's a lot of seasons open there's grouse duck geese bear uh, deers coming up there's moose those are things that we can't do at other times of the year so these are just plain old field wild apples they grow all over the place in southern ontario along the fields and these are very seasonal too just like everything but it's a really easy way to get a lot of sugar i did a calculation on how many apples i'd have to eat for 2500 calories and it was 10 pounds of apples that's a lot of apples and that might make your belly pretty sore even eating you know five or six apples might be pretty rough on you especially these wild ones so the idea is actually to cook them a little bit modern people are quite successful because they process their foods unlike animals that just basically eat everything raw we can make calories more accessible to our bodies through cooking and there's one thing that's ubiquitous across the whole planet when it comes to people regardless of their culture and that's having a warm meal at the end of the day that's cooked getting together with a, your family your community and eating over a warm cooked meal is something that people do all over the world. Oh, beauty. Look at those little burnt bits on the 
burnt bits of meat with the fat. The bear rinds. Oh yeah, <laughs> those are gonna be good. Yeah, we can pull that off and let it sit for a bit. It's a little hot, a little high, but yeah. No, that's all right. Maybe we'll take it off and stir it a little bit. A little bit more in practice. All that seasoning salt. Mmm. Makes it. There's so much to chew. <laughs> I wish I'd cut that in half, but it's so good. It really is. This is like walking up to the buffet. I know. This is like, <laughs> this is like Help the... yourself. So we've got uh, chanterelles, we got bear fat, we got beaver meat. It's seasoned to perfection. And then over here you have dessert, which is applesauce. Oh, that beaver is just falling right apart now. Even I mean, you tore it up, but like it comes right to pieces. That's that's definitely done good. So Zach's not sure if he wants to go out of ketosis. That's what will get him out of ketosis for sure. I am going to stay in ketosis as long as possible. So that'll be a good test, right? To see where you end, where we end up at the end. I, obviously, you're gonna stay out out of ketosis. So yeah, yeah, Whatever out I said of the yeah. opposite. Yeah, opposite. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna try to keep my sugars up. That's the idea because mm. I know in past uh, trials I've uh, neglected my sugars. Not probably not last season in Texas. We had a piles and piles of mulberries. So I doubt if I went into ketosis um, and that up uh, in that trial mm. yeah you're getting a lot of beer meat you're gonna like it all right it's I hope I like it's it really I'm good. taking a lot of it here <laughs> no take well well I figured we got a lot to eat I gotta fill <laughs> Do up you think we have a lot to eat this thing's full to the brim my big thing is uh, is to be able to start being able to digest the fat a little bit more. So eating the globules is like, sometimes it runs amok on your digestive system when you're not used to eating globules of fat. <laughs> because it's literally like, uh, that's what it looks like. It's a globule of fat. Yeah. Here. So you, you don't want it to, yeah. there's there a big, look at a wiggle. There you go. Yeah. You don't want to, like you say chew it, you want to chew it, right? You don't want to, you don't want your digestive system to be no, messing around. No, you want to chew everything. Well, you do want to chew everything. You're going to get the maximum amount of calories out of it. But I find if I like, you know, I might have like, you know, probably TMI. But you guys aren't eating. We are. <laughs> you know, when you're going, it's just like it wants to just go right through you. Right through you. Yeah. So you do want to break it down. So this would be better if we could render it, which my mouth is really watering. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if we can render it. Uh, that'd be ideal because then your body can make use of it better than just having to chew it. But so yeah, chew, chew well. Oh, the beaver. Isn't it good? That oh. is really good. I love beaver. I was ready to be a little bit like, oh. Not sure. It's okay. It's, you know, but It's a big rodent. But the, yeah, it's really, really good. That is, that's amazing. Is that better than roast beef? Yeah, I, yeah, it's better than roast beef. I'd say it's better than roast beef. Oh, oh, goat is my favorite meat. Goat? Oh. Yeah, and it reminds me a lot of the goat leg where the, the fiber, it's very fibery. Um, and, and or like a really stringy rabbit a little bit where it's very fibery. But it, but if it's not, it's not fibery, it's so cooked so well right now, it just melts in your mouth. That's really good. There's no, there's no need for floss after this. I, I hate food that you have to right. floss after. <laughs> Do you notice any gamey flavor? None. 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 None at all. I gotta thank Adam uh, Craig Outdoors for cleaning the beaver. He does a really awesome job. He harvested the castor gland so he can go out and trap other beaver. If you haven't watched that, go back to the start. All right, guys, as per the applesauce, it's dynamite, man. It's like real applesauce. Super sweet. Mmm. It's so good. With wild apples, I would recommend that you cook them. Cause there's bugs all through them, which will make you sick. Could make you sick. Cause you know what bugs do when they burrow through an apple, they poop a lot. So make sure you cook it, you only do 
You can eat poop, but just don't eat raw poop. Hmm. That's like legit sweet applesauce. You do not need to add any sugar to that at all. If anything, you could add a little bit of cinnamon, spice, something like that. Man, that is so good. Picking the wilderness sleeve challenge in the butt. If I don't weigh out, it's not going to be because I eat enough food. It's going to be because we're just hustling out here all the time, filming, running around. This is how people used to live in the wilderness. Not this starving nonsense. We gotta thrive out here. Guys, you can subscribe or not, I don't care. Subscribe to Zach Fowler, he cares. He's gonna be covering this whole series from his angle. So go over to his channel and you're gonna get his perspective on being here in Canada and hanging out with me. Till next time guys. Keep the beaver in the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I got you on that one. Yeah.